Fabulous. Now, in each one of those crackers is the scriptures for today. Uh, just I've picked four verses to reflect upon uh, for our third Emmanuel thoughts. Some of them repeat what we've been looking at in our Emmanuel thoughts and others uh, will lead us forward in our reflections on what God with us means. So I wonder if somebody has a Matthew scripture there. Does anybody have a Matthew scripture? And can you shout that out for us, please, Sandy? Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, is what we've started this Advent season with. It is that thought that God with us is in all of our ordinary sort of moments. That actually God with us was more than just the physical birth of Jesus in his physical presence, but it was the way he came and it was the life which he lived and it was the ministry which he brought all into our ordinary. That Emmanuel wasn't stopping at the cradle. It wasn't stopping at simply Jesus being physically on earth. It was continuing through his whole, absolutely whole message and life that he lived there as well. I wonder if somebody has a reading there from 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. Amen. Thank you, Alf. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? Last week, we looked at the message of the magnification of the Lord that Mary responded with when she was aware of the presence of the divine within her. That that reality of carrying the physical Son of God in her womb caused her to respond with glorifying the Lord in her life and in song there as well. And that we too are a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit we learned throughout our Trinity series is God, fully God, nowhere less, nowhere more, but equally God, three in one and one in three. And that means that we as carriers of the divine should respond with an attitude of worship, should respond with a sense of awe and wonder. My soul magnifies the Lord, says Mary. The reality is, is that the Holy Spirit, God, lives within us when we come to faith in him. Do you not know that you are a valued temple of the Holy Spirit? I wonder if somebody's got uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 for us. Who's got that scripture? Yeah, do you want to shout it out? Thank you, Shirley. Now that you are a body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it, that is a letter to the church that Paul writes. And it's a church in Corinth. And that's where you get the names of these letters in the Bible from. And this church in itself, Paul was writing to, it was a busy big church. Uh, Corinth was like New York and Las Vegas and London all rolled together. It was a trading port. It had all sorts of uh, stuff going on in it. And so the church would have been larger being a real urban center, but also the church was struggling as well. That it was struggling in competition with one another, that there were lawsuits among believers. Worship services became a bit of a cacophony of people trying to ex express the gifts of the Holy Spirit or and it all became a bit more about them than it did about others and so Paul is writing to this church and, and that's when we get 1 Corinthians 13 which you've read about uh, or heard mostly in weddings you know that actually we, we think about love what is love but the greatest gifts of all are faith hope and and love love isn't selfish love isn't ambitious love is kind love is forgiveness and all of those things Paul was writing to this church just to try and get them to see that it was less about them and more about others and he writes these words now you are the body of Christ what a wonderful truth that is now earlier on we reflected upon what God with us means 
And if we were to ask that question, we, we generally will get those first and initial responses of things which benefit us. And that's not wrong at all because God with us benefits us. That actually uh, a lot of us will say that if we gave you time to really dwell upon it, your answers will likely come. And uh, we did this question with Let's Sing Hymns group and, and we found that, that that God with us means that we maybe have peace in difficult times. That the Lord helps us through valley sort of moments. That he brings us joy or he gives us hope or he gives us confidence. That he walks alongside us and is a friend to us. And they are all absolutely absolutely right answers but if like the church in Corinth we only ever look at what God does for us we start to be inward and and it starts with a genuine uh, response to God but it, it starts to lead into more about us than it is about others and so this is my third thought to to progress us forward on the Emmanuel message that actually Emmanuel isn't God with us just for us. It is God with us for others. We are the body of Christ. Now, uh, Teresa of Avila is uh, a Carmelite nun from the 1500s, and, and she wrote a poem which I don't quite completely agree with uh, <laughs> theologically, but the message is, is perfectly right and sound. Because she says that God has no hands and feet but yours. Uh, and of course, actually, I mean, they're, they're, on a grand scale, that's absolutely right. But of course, there is Jesus in terms of his, his physical manifestation, in terms of his incarnation and body. But actually, you know, what she's writing is, is true. That we are God's hands and feet. Where Jesus is, hands and feet. Jesus, and this is where it comes because it denies potentially that Jesus is still physically present in his humanity, in his human body, and he is present in heaven. And this is where the poem doesn't quite convey that. But actually, when Jesus ascended to heaven, he made us his body on earth. He made you and he made me his hands his feet, his mouth, his heart, his love, his joy, his peace, so that Emmanuel may continue. The Emmanuel mission and fulfillment did not stop at the cradle when Jesus was born. The Emmanuel message and fulfillment did not finish when Jesus ascended into heaven. The Emmanuel, God with us, mission continued through his body, the church, you and me. That we together, the body of Christ, become the work of God with us to others. Because when people meet Jesus, they meet them through you and me. And that's not bigging us up. That's simply because why? We have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, God himself. So that when they meet us, they meet with God. We are a vessel. We are a channel. We are not God. We are not someone worthy of praise. But the one who dwells within us is the Holy Spirit. So the Emmanuel message is not simply for us, it is through us and into others. Who's got the last scripture there? Ephesians 2, verse 10. Yeah. Thank you so much. Great. We're God's handiwork created to do good works and this is where we come back to the ordinary we come back to the ordinary and the everyday the bits of our lives that we think God isn't in that we think God isn't interested in that we think perhaps isn't very spiritual but everything that we do every single person we greet every hand we shake in non-covid times every gift that we give 
Every time that we give time to somebody who's homeless on the street, every time that we share a smile with a colleague in the office in the morning, every time that we show integrity in our bookkeeping, every time we do a good job in our, in our jobs and our workplaces, every time we spend time with somebody like a family member or a friend when they need it, every time we do something that just isn't necessarily an act of worship, it isn't in church, it's not particularly particularly feeling spiritual, but every single good thing we do is Emmanuel working through us. It is God with us, through us, for others, so that they may meet the living Lord Jesus. There's no age of which Emmanuel isn't relevant in your life, whether you're in school, whether you're in work, whether you're retired. Emmanuel is for you and it's for others through you. And so that's my prayer, that actually we find ourselves in a place where we know God is with us, not simply for how it benefits us, but how it loves other people and how we love other people in our lives there as well. Let's pray.